Hey there, my name is Shreya and welcome to the Stitch by Shreya podcast. I'm Shreya, I'm 30 years old. I'm a Bharatanatyam dancer from the Bay Area and I've been knitting for about two year, two and a half years now and I'm an avid test knitter as well. So thanks for tuning in today. It's been a couple months since my last episode, my first episode actually, and that episode did so much better than I thought it would. I got so many lovely comments on my YouTube and my Instagram. So everyone who watched, thank you so much for supporting me and leaving a kind comment or leaving some constructive feedback. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I read every single one of them. I replied to most of them, um, but it was just, it was like very, a very pleasant surprise. And it was almost a little bit like overwhelming because I really didn't think that many people would see my videos. So I'm very, 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 very grateful. Now, um, I'm still figuring out like YouTube. I have been a user of YouTube for a long time, but I haven't really uploaded content all that often. And so I'm figuring out my editing style. I'm figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And um, I hope that you stay along for this journey. The past couple of months have been really crazy. I meant to upload at least once a month initially. However, life had its own plans for me. I did get the C word and that happened about two weeks after I filmed my first episode and that knocked me on my butt. Like, I was sick for about two weeks straight and then even after two weeks, I was having a really bad cough i was like losing stamina really easily and i just lost like all motivation to knit like every time i picked up my needles i would do four stitches and then put it down and close my eyes like i was just it was an experience that i never want to relive and it was for my first time in this entire like three years of lockdown and everything it's my first time getting it and that was a big surprise for me as well so I'm really glad to have spent this long not having it. However, once I did get it, I was like, whoa, this is rough. So that did knock me and my goals off track a little bit, but I was still managing to get some knitting done in the past couple of months. So the first, we'll, we'll just go straight into finished objects. The first finished object that I have is what I'm wearing today. So this is the Uptown Tee by Tori Yu. And it has this really lovely detail on the sleeve. So the construction is a raglan and um, it's a t-shirt and it's fingering weight and it's just simply beautiful. I really, really, really like it. And it was very quick to knit up. I say that because I finished the raglan, I think in two days. And then the body took me like maybe a week, week and a half after that. But it was so fast getting this one done. So the sleeves are like a pretty simple lace work with like yarn overs, knit two togethers, slip slip knits. Like it's a pretty simple um, process. However, it's kind of like addicting to go through and do it. And all the finishings are I-cord finishes. So initially the neckband in her pattern was just like you cast on and you go and you don't need to pick up and finish the neckband. But because the bottom edge is an I-cord as well as the sleeves. I kind of wanted the neckband to also match. So I picked up and did the neckband in I-cord as well. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the yarn. So I used Madeline Tosh Tosh Mo Light and it's a single ply yarn. I don't have any of it left because I used every last bit of scrap in this project. So it's a really beautiful, lovely color. Uh, I think it's the shade, I actually wrote it down this time. It's in shade Dawn and it's a mohair and merino blend. I think it's like 80% merino, 20% mohair and it's a single ply yarn. So it's my first single ply yarn that I worked with. I originally was going to use this yarn in the Stephen West MCAL. However, I think after one step of I didn't even get through one step of the MCAL. I think I did like eight rows and I was like, this is not the project for me. 
and I frogged it. So I still, I had this all caked up for like six months and I was waiting to use it because I don't like my cake sitting in cake form for forever. So I used it for this test knit and the yardage estimate was perfect. I even lengthened the body. Like I think, I think she suggested that you knit it until it's about like eight, no, maybe, maybe more than that, maybe like 10 inches from the underarm. So that would have like probably hit my, my, um, my waist dip. And I personally, I'm really tall. I'm six feet tall. I have a long torso. So I always tend to lengthen my gardens because I don't like gardens. I tend to lengthen my garments because I don't like a super cropped look on myself. I prefer it to at least hit my high hip bone or if it is a cropped garment, then I will typically wear like really high waisted pants with it. I'm not about like showing my belly. It's just not my comfort. So I just like to keep my upper body a little bit covered. So that's this one. Let's see. Yeah, it says I extended the body about 2.5 inches. So maybe it was like an extra like 20 grams of yarn or 25 grams, I guess. Um, towards the end, I was weighing my yarn like almost every other row. I was trying to utilize Stephanie from Edible Thoughts Makes, her um, usage of calculated yarn management. And because of that, I knit all the way through until I hit about, I think, seven grams of yarn left. And I used those seven grams to finish off the bottom um, I-cord I -cord finish as well as the neck band. So I think I was finished, I finished with like 1.5 grams of yarn, which for me, that's like a negligible amount. I just got rid of it because I'm not going to use that in anything at this point. So yeah, I, I'm really happy with this. It's a little bit itchy, I think because of the mohair content, but I anyways do wear like a tank top or like a, like a not seen garment underneath my um, knitwear usually because I don't want to ruin my knits that quickly. So I wear a tank top underneath and it's fine. I think it's a little bit itchy up here, but it's not to the point where it's bothersome for me. My other finished object for this week or these past two months is, are these socks that I finished for my husband. So let me do it like this. So these are honeymoon socks for my husband. As you can see, they are like, very long socks. I gave him, I think I did 20, I don't know, maybe it's like, I think it's 18 rows for the cuff, 60 rows for the leg, and I did a heel flap gusset um, with a three row garter or a three stitch garter edge on each side. And then the foot was, oh, I don't even know. I wrote down his measurements somewhere, but he has like size 13 men's feet. So they're, they take a while and you'll notice that I ran out of contrasting color. So they're not twins. They're like siblings and that's fine. He totally does not mind that. One thing I did notice after one wear was that he has somehow, there is like a hole here. So my hand in so I can show it better. So there's a hole right by this section of the heel. And when I look at it, it looks like the main color has kind of either come unraveled or maybe it was cut before I wove in the ends and I just simply forgot to weave in the ends completely. So I have this little, little piece of yarn sticking out and then there's one loop that hasn't dropped yet. So I have a, quite a bit of main color and contrast color left. So this is how much main color I have. I haven't weighed it, but I'm guessing I could get a good pair of shorties out of it. Um, so at some point this week, I need to go ahead and do surgery and then wash these for him because I want him to be able to use it, but also we're in the part of the year where it's like too hot for wool. Um, it's like, been up in it's been like anywhere from 75 to like 90 in the bay area this past couple weeks so since we're pretty much in summer 
I really don't think he's going to be in a rush to get these. However, as soon as, um, as soon as like October hits, he's going to be wanting to wear these a lot. So I want to have these ready sooner rather than later, because then I don't have to think about the work that I have to do for it. So the yarn that I used, this one is Lana Grossa About Berlin Yak Relax, and it's color 678. I don't know. It doesn't have a colorway name. It just had a number. And I purchased this in Munich at Ludwig Beck. There was like a Ludwig Beck yarn store. I don't remember exactly where in Munich it was, but it was like in the historical area. Um, and Ludwig Beck is like a chain of stores across Munich, but there was one that specifically sold a lot of yarn. So I found this there and um, it's really soft. I think it has quite a bit of yak content in it. So when I was knitting it up, it also has like a self patterning on it, which is really pretty. Um, and it's subtle. It's not like overly over the top. And the contrast colors, so this darker purple gray one, this one is from Sookie Mountain Fibers. And they do surprise mini skeins. So you can just put a number of like, you can put like, I want three, I want four, whatever in the cart. And she just gives you random ones. So I grabbed this one and I'd used it in something else. I don't remember what I used it in. It might've been another sock to be honest. And I had like 10 grams left. So I was like, let me just throw it in this sock. And then the other contrast color is Sorella, which I have like 5 million minis from. So this is Sorella yarn. And I think it's like Breckenridge, if I remember correctly from the winter tonals, but they're not labeled. So I just, I'm not, it's not, it's not a big deal for me to know like the colorway of my mini skeins, as long as it looks decent and cohesive, that's enough for me. So that is this one. And then this one is the one that has like the fun double color cuff. These are my finished objects for the past couple of months. It is a little bit crazy to me that I've only finished two things, but I have to be kind to myself when you're sick. All you need to focus on is getting better and not on your total productivity. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and move on to works in progress. So last time I came on here, I think I walked through like my nine or something works in progress. And from then till now, I'm really only going to talk about two today because those are the only two I've really put in a lot of work on. So now I'm going to move on to works in progress. And the first one I'm going to talk about is my Lento sweater. I think I had just finished the yoke and maybe a couple inches of body last time I talked. So this time I'd like to share that I have finished the body. I finished the body and I'm almost done with one sleeve. So I think I probably have about like one and a half inches as well as the sleeve ribbing. And it is such a small amount that I can probably knock out in like an evening. However, when I was starting to pick up working on this again was when I started to lose that energy to want to knit at all. So I think I would knit like two rounds and then I'd put it down and take a nap, knit another three rounds, and then I'd have to like stop for a while. So I know that I can get this done really soon, but I'm also not particularly in a rush to get it done. As I mentioned, it's extremely hot now and there's no way I'm gonna be able to wear a merino and surrey garment regularly until like maybe September, October again. So this, I can take my time finishing it and not feel like, oh my God, I need to get this done like right this second. Um, that being said, I don't want these things to linger on my needles for too much longer because I do have a large and growing stash that needs to be knit up. So I have plans to finish this as soon as I finish my next whip. However, that, oh, and I do have a deadline on this actually. I have a deadline to finish this, which is June 17th, I think. So I wanna get this done before that. But for right now, I'm not like rushing to like pick it up and get it done as soon as possible because it's an easy knit and knitting should be 
fun and enjoyable. And right now, my I get like hot working on this, so I need to stop for a little bit. Um, the yarn is through the Wardrobe Yarn Company, which is the base yarn. It's the it's by Fingering Weight, and it's her Fairy Tale Sock Face. This is in shade Rapunzel, which I believe was last year's May colorway in her Grim. In her Grim. What is it called? Monthly Club, yeah. In her Brother's Grim Monthly Club. So this was Rapunzel. It's a very beautiful light yellow, light pink yarn with like some speckling of brown in it. And so it's knitting up really nicely. I think if I look really closely, I'll see a little bit of like color pooling here and there. However, because it's such a light colorway, it's hard to notice it until you come up close. So it's very beautiful. And then you can see kind of in some places there's some speckling and I think it's more visible in the back actually. There is some speckling here and there, but it's not like terribly noticeable all throughout. So that is this one. And then the yarn for the Surrey is Sorella yarn in the shade Maison. This is just, I, I've become a convert to Surrey as, at this point and it doesn't itch, it doesn't make me irritated. So I really, really see myself wanting to use this more and more and more. So that is the yarn for this. And so far in my size, I have used one full ball of fingering weight, two full balls of Surrey, and I'm on my second ball of fingering and my third ball of Surrey. And I do feel like I will be able to finish this entire project with just these two, but I do have more just in case I need it. So if I do have quite a bit extra, I'm gonna use that for maybe like either a scrappy one of these, or I'm gonna make socks out of them. So that is this, hopefully to be done by the next time I film. My second whip is one that I did not show you in my last episode. So I think the last time I came on here, I did mention that there was a couple of test knits coming up that I really wanted to apply to. And this is one that I applied to and I got in. And so that is the Color Tip T by Emily Curtis. You might have seen this already on Instagram or there's a couple other YouTubers who have also been making this garment and I really like the fit of this so far. You'll see that I've gotten quite a bit done. Um, I'm actually probably like one, one and a half inches from being done with the stockinette for the body and then I have two inches of ribbing and then I also plan to add like a pocket right here. Now this is this was due yesterday and I didn't finish it, but luckily Emily gave me an extension. I did message her quite a bit in advance when I was having my sickness and I told her, I was like, listen, I'm having a really hard time knitting right now. I'm hoping to still get this done in time. And she was like, don't worry. Like if you need an extension, I got you. And I'm so grateful for that because I think about two weeks ago was when I was finally able to pick this up, at which point I'd only finished like the back panel and then like one shoulder. And then I had to finish the other panel connected in the round and then do like the sleeves, the neckline, and then I did the rest of the body. Like I think I started the body last Tuesday and I've just been like zooming ever since then. So right now my body is about like 11 inches long and I have about, I think I wanna get to 12.5 inches before I start the ribbing. Now this one compared to my Uptown tee is a little bit more of a fitted feel for me and that's totally fine. It's so cute when I try it on and I'm really excited for the final object which should be there. I should be able to wear it during my next podcast. Um, so the yarn that I used for this one is Pearl Soho Linen Quill. The base color, the main color that I'm using is Oatmeal Gray. And I purchased this last year when I was doing my coloring book tea by Amy Sure. So when I was doing that test knit, I purchased a little bit extra of the oatmeal gray because I originally planned on making a half and half with it. And so that is the base color. It's like a beautiful, cool gray, I guess. And it has like a little bit of marling throughout. So it kind of looks like a little bit of gray and a little bit of like, I don't want to say ecru, but maybe more like 
not beige either. It's like a little bit of gray with a little bit of oatmeal. So that's why it's called oatmeal gray, obviously. And so that's the base. Then my pink contrast color for the neckband is Rose Granite by Linen Quilt. So that's this colorway. This is what my main color for the coloring book tee was. And oatmeal gray was my contrast color. So in this situation, I'm doing the opposite. And this is gonna be my body ribbing as well. I love how the colors work together. And I did manage to pull a third color for the sleeves. So originally I was just gonna use the rose granite for all of the finishes. However, I saw this, um, this in my stash, which is Kremke, Kremke, what is it? Okay, Kremke, oh, let me just look at this. Okay, Kremke Soul Wool Lazy Linen in the shade, okay, well, it doesn't say, it says color is 12, which I think is just green. So this one is a mix of 80% wool and 20% linen. So this one is not the same wool content as um, the linen quill, but it feels lovely and it's soft. And I am gonna use the rest of this for socks actually for my um, sister-in-law and I thought that these colors like kind of all played well together. And I think I might make the pocket edging this color as well. So those are, that's the color tip T. Construction wise, this is just, I think these are called set in sleeves because they have sleeve shaping here. But Emily kind of based this a little bit off of her dad's sweater pattern um, with the shaping, I think at least. and. Um, the sleeves have like a sleeve cap and then you just, once you finish the short rows for the sleeve, you have like one or two more inches maximum and then you do the ribbing. So it's really, really fun and the construction is not hard, it's not intimidating. And I think the body can get a little bit tedious and I'm definitely pushing myself to the limit. This is how much I've knit today actually. So today I started where this little cow stitch marker is. So I've done about two inches today and I want to do one and a half more because I really want to be done with the stockinette today so I can start the ribbing tomorrow or tonight, whichever comes first. Okay, I want to start, I want to finish the stockinette tonight and I would ideally like to start the ribbing either tonight or tomorrow, depending on how tired I am after work. But regardless, this should be done very soon and I'm very excited to have this done. Um, it's been a process. I thought I wasn't gonna finish it. Sometimes like you get in your head about these test knits and I've never failed a test knit in the sense that like I've never not been able to complete it in time and so that's why this time I'm just like, don't put pressure on yourself. You had a really valid reason for not finishing, but I still want to get it done because I want the finished object and it feels nice. It looks great. And it's going to be something I can definitely wear in the summer. So that is my color tip tea. And now I'm going to move on to acquisitions. So I did not talk about acquisitions at all in my last episode. Because I was like, a little bit like, mm, should I really talk about all the stuff that I've been purchasing lately? And the answer is, is like, it's up to me, right? I can choose what I want to show you and what I don't want to show you. So I'm going to show you what I got recently from Olivia and Oliver Fibers. They are a dyer based in the Netherlands. And I saw their warm neutrals preview for um or sorry warm neutrals pre-order and I saw all the photos she had and it was just calling to me they're all the colors I love they're all the colors I just like gravitate towards so the colors that I got I'll start with I first got Surrey um this is the colorway feather 
and I saw her post a work in progress of I think the Jenny sweater. So she had used I think feather Surrey as well as feather in her merino and I was very inspired by that because one I'm a sucker for a good petite knit pattern. I have not really made any of her garments but I have made the Oslo hat multiple times and I've also made one of her other hat patterns and I just I, I like the aesthetic a lot. So I have plans to hold this with um, another fingering weight that I have in stash. It's kind of like, it, it's like a light pink, but it doesn't really have a strong color either way. And I'm gonna hold this with that and maybe make the Ingrid sweater. Yeah, so my friend modded her, I think when the Ingrid sweater, you use a DK yarn with a mohair. I am planning to use a fingering weight one with mohair. So obviously I need a gauge swatch because I'm changing the gauge a little bit, but I figured Surrey is a thicker lace weight yarn anyways. And the fingering weight that I have is like, it's not a light fingering, it's more like a heavy fingering. So hopefully I can like gauge swatch and make it work. This is just, it's stunning. It has like little bits of pink, little bits of like light brown, and maybe even bits of purple along with cream. So it's just really, really, really pretty. And I think it'll look lovely in a texture. I wouldn't have put this together had I not seen her um, work in progress shot of this with a texture. So that's why I think I feel so confident that it's gonna work. But obviously swatching will help me answer any doubts about that. So that is the first thing that I got. And I got five skeins of Surrey because any textured pattern is gonna require quite a bit of yarn. Then I also got a sock set. So this is pink marble, the main color. And the contrast color is called Shell. So Shell is kind of like a light, a very light pink, leaning more towards peachy pink. And then Rose, or no, sorry, pink marble. It literally looks like pink marbling. So I've, I'm always a sucker for this like pink color or like pink with cream with like a little bit of brown. Like this is up my alley. I love to knit with it. I love to wear these colors. I'm in my pastel era. I think that just might be like springtime me though, but really love these colors. Um, I probably will make socks with them, but now that I've seen it in person, part of me wants to go and order like a sweater quantity from her. But if I do that, I got, I'm gonna wait a little bit because I have quite a few sweater quantities to work through. So that is this one. And then I also got one skein of Withered Rose. So this Withered Rose color, it's, has a little bit more of like a brown tinge to it than um, the pink marble does. And so it's more of like a deeper rosy brown color. Um, I, I also really like this one. I only wanted to get one skein because I was like, maybe I'll just make an accessory with it. I don't have any hats for myself, so maybe I can make a brownstone beanie with this, um, which is by Tori Yu. And this too is one of like those colorways that is just, it almost feels like it's glowing off the skein, which I don't know if you can see that, but I feel like it has like a glow from within. So I'm really excited to use this. I'm really excited to use all of her yarns actually. It was mainly that Surrey order that I got and then these two other single skeins. Lately, I've been gravitating to not getting sweater quantities, but getting like one or two skeins because I might, like the color online and then when I see it in person I'm not like stunned by it or maybe I'm not as excited as I thought and if I get a single skein then I'm more likely to use that as a gift knit for someone else or even just an accessory for myself but when I want to get a sweater quantity I feel like I really need to know like that I'm going to use it that I'm going to really like it and I do love making garments however accessories are faster Unless you're making socks, for some reason socks take me like just as long as like some garments do. But like hats, for example, they take me no time. Or even like I haven't done any cowls or I haven't done um, any shawls yet, but I feel like those don't take 
as long sometimes as socks do. And I think that's because I'm not like a seasoned sock knitter. I know there are plenty of YouTubers who make so many pairs of socks and just like knock it out quickly. But I think because I have size 11 women's feet and like everyone in my family has large feet, sock knitting feels like a chore sometimes. Whereas if I do like a hat, all of them have like almost, they're almost all like either adult mediums or adult larges. So it's like a lot more easy to just knock out a hat really quickly. But when I do the socks, I'm just like, oh my God, I have like 40 more rows of foot to go. Oh my God, it's just like nonstop, never ending. So that's why like I'm a lot more inclined to do like other hats or things like that, or even holding things double. I guess I could make DK socks for my family from now on, but we do live in California and I feel like the usage for DK socks is like one month from like December to January. So regardless, um, I do have a lot of single skeins now, so I either will use them for like a striped sweater or I will do a color block sweater. I don't know yet, but I do, I do not mind like mixing and matching from different dyers. I think it'll be really fun. So that's about it for my acquisitions. Now for upcoming plans, after I finish my color tip tea, I plan to focus on my lento. And then I have like a slew of gift knits that I need to finish, as well as a couple of works in progress that I just have like personal deadlines on. So that includes gift socks for my sister-in-law, a hat for my dad, whose birthday is in July. So I have to finish a hat for him. And then I have some baby knitting that I need to do for my best friend's child who is turning one very soon. So I have a couple things I wanna finish for his birthday. And I also have a pair of socks I wanna finish, which is like a self-striping pair of socks, as well as another sweater that I mentioned in my last video. So those all have deadlines and a lot of them are pretty much coming up in June. I do have a vacation planned in June, so I'm planning to take all my a lot of my knitting with me because it's going to be to Hawaii and we are going to be chilling on the beach, poolside, pretty much all day long. Not a whole lot of like excursions and stuff planned, so luckily that gives me plenty of time to just veg out, chill, not have to worry about like any responsibilities or anything other than just doing whatever I want. So I'm very excited for that. And um, I think that's it for all my knitting content for today. I did want to know if you guys would be interested in me potentially doing like a TV corner or a reality TV corner. I watch a lot of television. Um, right now, primarily I'm watching Vanderpump Rules, Succession. Um, I just caught up with Attack on Titan, which is an anime. And I have also been watching um, Dave on Hulu. So I, I watch like a wide variety of shows. I watch a lot of reality TV. I watch a lot of dramas. And um, I do enjoy talking about TV with my friends who watch the same shows as me. Um, I haven't been reading as much lately. Like I think I get like one or two books done a month, if that. Uh, and I just got Tears of the Kingdom which is the new Zelda game. So Tears of the Kingdom is a sequel to Breath of the Wild. And for me, I played a whole lot of Breath of the Wild during the pandemic, specifically during like the lockdown portion when you weren't supposed to go out anywhere. So during that time I was playing Animal Crossing and Breath of the Wild, like pretty much nonstop. And now that the new game has come out, my husband and I have been spending our evenings together, either watching the other person play. So I got to play a little bit on, I think Saturday night and then he played a little bit of it yesterday while I was knitting. So it was really fun and I'm enjoying that time as well. So let me know if you want me to talk a little bit more about these other topics next time. But I think I'm going to wrap it up here because I feel really rusty with speaking to a camera and my throat is like tired from me talking. I'm really, I have a dry mouth. So I'm just going to wrap up here and I really appreciate you tuning in once again. Hopefully you got something out of this episode and leave a comment below letting me know what you were working on or what you were doing during this episode. Thank you so much. Bye.